Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be looking at grids in SwiftUI. Grids allow us to create dynamic or static content in multiple rows and columns. What we're going to do is look at how we can use grids to build multi-column and row layouts using Lazy vGrid and Lazy HGrid. If you want to learn more about Lazy Loaded Lists as well that only features one column or row then you should check out Lazy Stacks in SwiftUI. So, breaking down grids. So let's see all the options we have first by starting off with a lazy V grid that has two columns. So first of all, let's actually create our data source, which is going to be an array of numbers. So think of this as our source of truth for our list. Okay, cool. So what we've done here is to just define ourselves a range from one to 50 that we're going to map and then create an array of strings that go through all these numbers and just put item before them. So this is just an array of strings that we're defining here. So this is going to be our source of truth within this view. So let's actually add in a scroll view since we actually need to give our lazy grid the capability to scroll as well. So let's just delete this text and we'll just type out scroll view like so. And one now what we're going to do is add in our V grid. So let's actually type this one out together to see what we get offered to us. So in our scroll view, if you just start typing lazy, you'll see that you have a lazy V grid, which is the one that we want to use. And if you don't, then just keep typing until you get lazy V grid. So now if we just hit enter and then we initialize this, you'll see that we have quite a few options here. And we're going to go through all these options. But the one I want us to work with first is columns and content. So on, the, on that, just hit enter. And then if you just create it with an empty array and then go to content and hit enter so you get the closure to build your views cool so now we've got everything that we need so far so now what we need to do is actually add in a for each loop for our source of truth which is our items and i'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down so we have a for each loop here and if you want to learn more about for each loops then check out my video breaking down identifiable and for each and within this for each loop we're just saying that we're going to go through every item within this items array and then what we're going to do is create a text view with that string from that was created from the items we're going to set the frame of it to be max width infinity so it spans the whole screen and then we're going to set the padding to be vertical 50 which is top and bottom and then we're going to give it a background blue and a rounded rectangle with a corner radius style of continuous so we just get a nice smooth corner radius edge so if we actually just run this in the swift ui preview to see what happens so you'll notice that we don't actually see anything on the screen and you may be wondering well tons what's what's going on well the reason why you can't actually see anything on the screen if you actually look at our lazy v grid and you look at our columns we've actually defined here an empty array so we've told our lazy v grid that we don't actually want to have any columns within it which is why you don't see anything so what we need to do is actually give our v grid some columns and we can actually do this by giving it something called a grid item and within this item we can then declare what type of spacing we want for each column within our v grid so we'll go through all the different ones but for now let's just go with flexible and then we'll break this down so i'm going to create a constant at the top of this file here which is going to be the configuration for our lazy v grids columns so i'm going to type this out and then break it down so what we've got here is we've got a constant here, which I call columns, and it's an array of grid items. So when you're working with columns, you have to give it an array of grid items. And like I said before, there's a range, but the one we're gonna be focusing on now is just flexible. So if we actually put this columns into our columns array here, you'll notice that we now can see all of our items and that's because we've declared a, a one column layout with this grid item here. What about if we actually wanted to make this two columns instead? Well, all we need to do is actually add another column into our array. So let's do this now. So within here, if you just add a comma and then if we just type out grid item and then dot flexible, and you'll notice that when you're working with dot flexible you actually have quite a few you have two options you can use here and we'll get to that in a bit but for now we just want it to just work like so and now if you hit resume on your swift ui preview you'll notice that you now have a two column layout so what's going on here with flexible so what flexible basically means is that i want you to fill up the available space on the screen 
So like when we had one column, what was going on is that we only had one column and the system knew that this is the available space, which is the whole width of the screen. But now because we have two columns, now our UI is splitting up our two columns and laying out our views to fill up all the space on the screen, but with two columns and the spacing for the lazy V grid. So if you need to build some kind of grid where you just kind of want the system to just lay out the views and just fill up the screen like a two column layout, like I've got here or three column layout, then you want to go with flexible, that's your best bet. But with flexible, now that we know how the system will lay out the UI based on the available space, what about if we want to set a min and a max like I showed you before. So like if we only want our items to be as small or as big as a given value, well flexible actually has those properties that I showed you within it. We don't actually need to set both of them as well. We actually could just set them independence independently. So we could just set one of them to have a minimum and a maximum. So for this view, let's actually see how we can do that. So let's set the minimum and the maximum for this view. So for the first column here, I'm gonna say that I want the minimum um to be 20 and i want the maximum to be 50 and now if we run this in our swift ui preview you'll now notice that our view now shrinks and it's also worth noting as well that when you're working with minimum and maximum you don't have to use both of them so as you can see if i remove the minimum like so and hit resume you'll notice that our view has now gone where the maximum of it is 50. So now we've done that and looked in flexible. What about the other options available to us as well? But well, we have another grid item type available to us called fixed. So let's look into this. So what we'll do is comment out our flexible and we'll add this in now and then break it down. What we've said here is we're using fixed and we're saying that we want this column to have a fixed width of 100 and the same as the second column. And we also want our grid item to have a fixed width here, the last one of 50. So if you just look at our grid here, you'll notice that these two are the same and this one is now 50. Now, because we've declared that we want this to be fixed, you can see here that it doesn't actually fill up the entire screen. And the reason for this is because, you know, we've set a fixed width on it. So if you wanted to create some kind of like grid where all the items are a fixed size, then this is the best option for you. And one more thing I want you to notice is that, I don't know if you realize this, but what we're actually able to do as well if we wanted to, is we can actually mix and match fixed, flexible, and the other option we'll get to in a second. So what I'm going to do is just uncomment this out to show you what this looks like. So if I actually take out this out, and then just put in that missing comma, you'll now notice that our grid automatically fills out the remaining space with flexible, but still maintains our fixed width for our second, third, and fourth column, like so. So you can actually mix and match these different options. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna comment this out again. So the final option that I wanna go over is called adaptive. So let's actually comment out our fix and then this time we'll add in our adaptive and see how our grid reacts. Cool. So you can see here, we've added in our adaptive and with adaptive, you can set a minimum and a maximum. So the minimum similar to flexible is the minimum width and the maximum width. And we've done that with our two grid items. But if you actually look at our view, you'll notice something a bit strange here. So we've actually declared two grid items but we've actually got four columns on the screen so we've actually got double the column so you're probably wondering why haven't we just got two well the way adaptive works is a bit different to fix and a bit different to flexible what we're saying here with adaptive is that we want you to adapt to the view on the screen and fill up the available space with the width that we've defined so what we're saying here is that i want you to have a minimum width of 50 and if you can fill up any remaining space then fill up that space with another item so within this grid column here we've said that we want it to be 50 so you can see here it's 50 50 50 and then on our last one here we want the minimum to be 100 so this is 100 so what the grid is going to do is try to lay out this item with 50 50 50 and 100 on each 
row. So Swift UI will calculate and try to force the items into this sizing that you've done here. So that's why adaptive works. So adaptive can be really useful when you wanna have items within a grid that have, well, I'm gonna say it, adaptive sizes. So you wanna fill up the available space with some kind of um, adaptive size view that could change based on some sort of configuration. So we've gone through all the options, but if we wanted to, we could actually click into this grid item and see all the options available to us. So let's actually do this now. So if we just hold down command on your keyboard and just click on adaptive and then click to jump to definition, you'll notice that we actually have our enum cases here with all the options and also as well, the way that they lay them out. So I'd highly recommend that you read this and check this out to fully understand how each case works. So let's just go back to our example. And one thing that we didn't actually look at was spacing and alignment. So if you wanted to, you could actually add space in between your items in your grid. So let's actually do this now. So on our lazy V grid, I'm just going to hit enter on the parentheses to create some space. And then what we're going to do is actually add some spacing of 32 um, pixels. So underneath your columns, if you just type out spacing, and if you just type here 32, you'll notice now that because we're working with a V grid and a V grid actually lays out your views in rows, you'll see that we now have spacing between each row in our lazy V grid, like so. So if we wanted to as well, we could also set the alignment of our grid as well. But in order to see this effect, we need to choose a column layout where our grid doesn't fill up the remaining space like flexible and adaptive. Let's actually comment this out. And then let's uncomment our fixed so we can get back our fixed options. And now you should see that our items are in the center. And that's because by default, SwiftUI lays out its views in the center of the screen. So what about if we actually want to change the alignment of this grid and rather than getting these items to be laid out in the center, we want them to be laid out on the left or trailing edge. Because we're working with a lazy V grid, the only alignment you can use is horizontal. So you can only lay out this view either in the left, so leading, center or trailing. So what we're going to do is actually add in our alignment property, which is above our spacing. And when you hit dot, you'll see all the options that you had, like I mentioned the horizontal alignment options. And we're just going to say trailing like so. And now you can see that our grid is actually laying out our views from the right hand side. And if you were to change this to leading, you'll see that it now goes to the left hand side like so. So the final thing that I want to show you with lazy grids is how sections are handled and sticky headers. So let's actually create two sections and both containing 50 items within our grid. So what we're going to do is actually give both section headers a banner so it's clear which one is which. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down together. So now we've got our two sections. So within our first section here, we've just got a for each loop and we've still got our text, but this time in our closure for our section, we've added a header which says that this is the first section and we're just giving it a background color of min and so we can easily identify it. And in our second section, we're doing the exact same thing uh, we changed the background color this time from blue to red and we've also added a header called second section as well and set the background color of this to pink too. We actually just scroll down within our grid all the way down. You'll notice that here is our, where our second section starts. So with lazy V grid, similar to lazy stacks, we can actually handle having sticky headers as well. So underneath our spacing, let's actually add in the pin views parameter and say that we want to pin our headers to the top as you scroll. So just underneath your spacing, if you just type out pin views, and then you wanna use the option called section headers. So now, as you start to scroll, you'll see that our first section is actually pinned to the top of the safe area layout. You keep scrolling, you'll notice that our second section now takes over once you hit it. So cool. So now we saw how sticky headers are handled in lazy grids. So we've looked into lazy V grid, but what about lazy H stack? So what we're going to do is actually copy our entire scroll views view so this entire scroll view so all of this and we're going to create a computer property called v grid example and another example called h grid example so we can just see the differences between the two so let's just get our scroll view like so 
and then I'm just gonna go to the end here. So as you can see, we've now got our two extensions. So our first extension is for our vGrid example, and our second one is for our HGrid example. And what I've just done is commented out the vGrid example so we can just see the HGrid one that we'll be working on. Now, as of right now, it's just literally the exact same, so it doesn't look any different. But you know, when we're working with HGrid, the first thing that we need to do is actually change our axes on our scroll view. So on the scroll view, you want to change the axes to horizontal because with a lazy HGrid, it's actually laying out the views um, horizontally this time, and you want to be able to uh, scroll horizontally. So right now, this is still wrong because we're using a lazy V grid within a horizontal scroll view. So in order to fix this, what we need to do is actually change this to lazy H grid. Because we're now actually going horizontal rather than vertical, we're now going to get a couple of errors here. And the first error that we're going to get is this time, we're not actually working with columns, we're working with rows. So we need to actually change our argument from column to rows to fix the first error. And then the second error that we've got is our alignment. So when you're actually working with a lazy H grid, you can't actually lay out a views leading, center, or trailing. Instead, you have to do vertical alignment, which is top, center, and bottom. So what we need to do here is specify one of those. So what I'm going to say here is just top, like so. Okay, cool. So now, as you can see, we've now added in our rows, so not row, rows property, and changed our alignment. And as you can see now, we're actually able to scroll through our lazy H grid here like so, and we've still got our sticky header capability as well. So before we actually wrap up this video, I just wanna show you how you can actually use grids to do some like powerful stuff like animations. So what we're going to do is actually animate, changing some layouts within our SwiftUI app. So let's create a new SwiftUI file called layout UI example. So next, so what we need to do is actually create a source of truth for this file in terms of updating our UI layout. So let's actually create a state variable. And if you want to learn more about this, then check out my video state in SwiftUI. So what we're going to do is actually add in this state variable and it's going to be called is multi column and it's going to be a Boolean. So what this is multi column is going to do is allow us to switch between either a single column layout so this is going to be a vertical list or a grid with two columns, which we'll be looking at in a second. So then we actually need to add in some SF symbols to show the difference in our UI based on which configuration you chose. And if you want to learn more about SF symbols, then check out my video SF symbols in SwiftUI to learn more about them. So I'm going to type this out and then we'll just break this down. Okay, cool. So we've got our property here, which is the computer property columns, and it has an array of grid items. So right now it's just flexible. And the reason why I'm using a computer property is because I want this value to change and be evaluated whenever our is multi column property changes, which you'll see in a second. And all we've done here is just adding a lazy V grid with using those columns that we're going to switch between. And right now we just got a button that will handle switching. And you can see here in the top right hand side that we just got our layout saying that this is a grid. So we need to actually add in a for each that will loop through and use our single column to create some rectangles. So let's actually add this in now. So now we're just looping through zero to 50 and creating some rectangles that you can see on the screen here, some rounded rectangles. So we've done that, but now we need to actually handle switching between our SF symbol when our button is tapped. So when this is tapped, we actually want it to change to a grid layout. So we actually want this to be the grid layout first to say, hey, if you want to change to the grid, then tap this. And if you're on the grid, we want it to change back to this. So what I'm going to do is actually just do a bit of typing on our button and then we'll break that down. So if you actually just look at our view here now, what we've got on our button is we just got a, in the action, we just toggle multi-column and set this to either true or false. So what we're also doing here is that within the label, based on whether it is a multi-column or, column or not, we're also changing the SS symbol that's on the screen as well. So if it is a multi-column layout, then we're going to show the single grid. And if it isn't a multi-column layout at the moment, then we're going to show this option to say, hey, you can now switch it to be a multi-column layout. And we've actually got an extra symbol variant here that we don't need. So I'm just going to delete this. Bye, Felicia.
So the reason why we're actually using a ternary statement here and not an if statement is because we want to update this views local state and not create another button when you switch between the two. And you can actually learn more about this in my video breaking down SwiftUI and SwiftUI state and data flow. So now we need to actually update our grid and change its layout based on our source of truth. So within our computer property, let's actually update this to use our multi-column. So what we're saying here is that if it is a multi-column layout, then we want to return two columns that are flexible, so it'll fill up the available space on the screen. And if it isn't, then what we're going to do is just return a single grid item with one column. Now this is valid, but if you actually look at it right now, it's pretty ugly to look at and you know, it's quite long. We can actually reduce this by using the array initializer directly. So actually look into this and then break it down. So what we're saying here is that within, we want to create an array of grid items that are flexible and our count property allows us to say how many items we want in this array. So we're saying that if this is a multi-column, we want to create two flexible grid items. And if it is a multi-column, then we just want to create just the one. So what we're going to do now is run this in a preview and see what happens. So if I just tap on this, you'll notice that we do get our multi-column layout with two columns, but we actually have a bug here and notice how when we go into two columns, our button is being accounted for within this lazy V grid. And this is because our button is actually part of the lazy V grid itself. And we don't want our button to be part of the lazy V grid. We just want our button to be within the scroll view itself. So what we need to do is move this button out of our lazy V grid and actually just get it to position itself on top of it within the scroll view. So you actually just copy this out of here and just paste it above the lazy V grid. You'll notice that now our button is placed in the um, center. And if we actually change the layout, you can see that it's updating. But now because of this, our button is actually in the center and we want it to actually move to the right hand side. Now you may be wondering that, oh, you know, I'll, I'm going to put this in a H stack and I'll just use a spacer. But that's a lot of unnecessary code just for alignment. So instead of doing that, what we're going to do is actually use the frame and set the alignment of our button to be trailing. So let's just do this now. So what we set here is we just set the frame of our button to have a max width of infinity. And we've also set the alignment of it to be trailing. So what's actually going on here, if I just take this out of the preview mode, you'll see that our button now actually spans the entire width of the screen and we're saying that we want the content within our button, so this image, to be trailing on the right hand side. And then what we do is apply some padding onto the whole button, which is why we've got this whole space around inside the button. So you'll notice that we've actually applied this infinity width onto our button. But if we actually run this on the SwiftUI preview, you'll notice that this area isn't actually tappable. You can only click on the image. And that's because we've only applied this frame onto the button and not the image itself. And I actually break this down in my videos, buttons in SwiftUI. And you can also check out my video layouts in SwiftUI as well. So now the final thing that we want to do is actually animate our layout and the height of this view based on the column option that has been selected. So we only want to animate this height and also our grid changing via our columns. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the animation modifier directly onto our lazy V grid so that we don't animate our SF symbol and we just animate just the changes within this lazy V grid. So the first thing we need to do is depending on the type of column layer that you're looking at, we want to change the height of this rounded rectangle. So let's just do that now. Okay, cool. So now what we're saying is that depending on whether this is multi-column or not, we're going to change the height of it. So if this is multi-column, you'll see that the height has now decreased to 100. And if it isn't, it's increased to 250. And then finally, what we need to do is apply that animation modifier onto our lazy V grid. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So starting with iOS 13, before you could just do something like this with the animation modifier. But now if you do something like this, Xcode will actually give you an, well, not an error, but a warning saying that this is now deprecated. And the reason why that is, is because this animates any 
change to your Swift UI's local state. What we want to do is we only want our view to animate changes for when this specific property is changed, which is why we use the value property. So whenever this value changes, this animation is what will occur. So what we're saying here now is that on the lazy V grid, I want you to animate any changes that are affected by its multi-column. If you look at our lazy V grid, the views that are affected is the lazy V grid itself, because within it, columns, we are changing the number of columns that you see on the screen. And also within our for each loop, we're also changing the height as well, as you can see here on our rounded rectangle. So only these two things, the V grid and our rectangle should animate, our button shouldn't change. So let's test it out now. So if we actually tap this now, you'll see that we actually get the animation for the height and also the multi-column layout and the button doesn't animate, it just snaps in between the two. Cool, so that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.